Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, joining Eighth House Awakenings. Clarity time. We are uh, looking at the uh, sacral chakra in that a beautiful bowl. And I just want to get right into it because I just got a message that kind of annoyed me and I said, you know, I have to be careful what I say because, you know, I don't want to unalive anybody with my words. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just saying I have to be mindful of what I say. And so I want to uh, tap into the sacral chakra and just calm, <laughs> calm my nerves, calm my thoughts. And I figured I'd take you along with me. So, let's take a deep breath in. and release. Sensuality, sexuality, uh, new birth, creativity, let's just feel the orange ball of light just below our navel. the sacral is close to me, the crystal. So let's just really tap into to calm my nerve and to awaken uh, my sacral chakra and mine and yours okay um, I want to utilize my my selenite uh, just to clear out some energy let's go in and take it Take it down. I have to do mine first, and then I'll get closer 
and do yours. We want to just take that energy. When I tell you, you can absolutely feel this, I want to take that energy and lift it off of you and release it to the heavens. And so let's take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it, hold it, gather all of the energy that doesn't serve your highest good and release. Let's do one more deep breath in through your nose. Let's really draw in that energy. Hold on to it. Let it swell like the full moon and then release. Exhale with a sigh. Yes, I am very, I am very grateful for that. Oh. I am very grateful for just being able to take a moment and um, and have that little release. Uh, sometimes I take my uh, my crystal uh, knife, uh, sword, uh, <laughs> right, and and cut through that energy um, if it's heavy like that. And uh, so yeah, we want to just uh, just get into an attitude of gratitude. So one more deep breath in, hold it, hold it and release. <sighs> Want to change our mind, change our hearts. Um, I think that I want to take a look at the uh, Wild and Sacred Feminine deck. When I tell you I absolutely love this deck. I don't know that I have one that I don't love, but, <laughs> but I definitely, definitely love this one. I love this deck. It is amazing. And you know, I like a chunky book, honey, because it has a lot of great info. So we're going to, uh, for this clarity time, or maybe just, uh, you know, a deck review. Perhaps we'll call this a deck review. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and uh, click the subscription button. And uh, if this resonates with you, give me a, a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any questions, concerns. Put it in the uh, comments and I will, okay. <laughs> and I will certainly uh, respond to you. First card out is Wolf. Okay, I'm not in the, uh, I don't have the reflection today. Yay. It is Wolf. It's actually the uh, card, the picture that's on the box. <laughs> I love that. The divine, the wild and sacred feminine. 52 card oracle. Uh, Deck, Nikki Duat and Elizabeth Margling. Illustrations by Jenny Kostecki Shaw. Okay, if I didn't mess up their names, I don't think. And so, uh, let's tap into the wild and sacred feminine and see what she has for us. Wolf is the first card out. I'm going to give you a little preview of the cards, but... Uh, it says mastery. Coming into uh, mastery of our gifts, of our talents, of our craft. Uh, when we, you know, have it, if I could turn the camera, it's so much, it's 
so many tools uh, in here. It's, it's a bowl of crystals right here. And that's just a very small <laughs> amount uh, based on what I have. Coming into mastery, the wolf is protective. He is, um, he's a guide, right? He's nocturnal. He sees at night. He hunts. I want to say hunts at night. Um, you also have the moon there. So we know that it has to do with uh, intuition and seeing what is hidden, right? Uh, having that be revealed. Uh, through the eyes of the wolf. I don't think you can see it, but the eyes are red. Yeah, see that? The eyes are uh, red. The, there is um, the moon. There are also feathers and trees that make up a part of her, um, of her clothing, her covering. So now we are talking about uh, earth magic. We are talking about uh, honoring ancestors and uh, in the in the trees. Let's go into the book and see who and what it is. So uh, the wolf falls under the wild feminine. The wild feminine. Uh, and let's see. The wolf, I'm going to try to hold it so that we can see. Okay. Uh, it says, the card of astute leadership. Wolf exemplifies mastery, a realized state of being that fulfills your soul's purpose by living in service to something larger than yourself. This includes service to your pack your your um, team, your tribe, your territory, and by extension, the whole. When you are in your mastery, you will not ask the holy for what you want. You will ask the holy for what it wants from you, your higher self. You're going to find out what your higher self, right? Because we're not talking about something outside of you. We are talking about you. Wolf calls you to take your place in the seat of power. Power with and power for and power over. Let me tell you something. I, that's for me right there. <laughs> I needed to hear that in this moment. But in order to serve as pathfinder and guide, you must first find the source of your own true north. Evolved leader holds the conviction that there is an intelligence within the universe that offers direction. Prepare, like Wolf, to rely on your vast integrity and intuition, right? The moon, you're going to rely on your intuition. It says the potent combination of loyalty to tribe, bright alertness, honing your instincts, and strong sense of numerosity. Numinosity, you are born from wildness. Therefore, step into your wolf skin and become part of the world's immense intimacy. Right? Tap into who you truly are. Get to know you. And in order to do that, you gotta tap into your ancestors, right? Which is what I said. See the trees in there. You've got to tap into your ancestors, yes. It says the shadow of wolf is the lone wolf, the one who puts herself before the needs of the tribe. That's not where we want to be. To indulge in self-serving and alliance to smallness, it dishonors the spirit of the wolf. So because it didn't come out in its shadow or upside down, right, in its shadow form, uh, we don't want to operate in that selfishness. Now, selfishness is good a lot of the times, but not in this instance, right? We are being led by the spirit of the wolf, right? Um, eyes wide open. We are tapping into that instinct in us that says, move this way. 
right? You see this, this red, I'm going to call it the sun. That's that fire energy. So now you've got divine masculine in the fire. You've got divine feminine in the moon, right? That's balance. That's balance. That's not leaning too far to the left or to the right, okay? In the wolf, in mastering your um, ma'at, your balance, your equilibrium, so that you move through um, in your gift, in your, okay, now, in your power. <laughs> you are moving, ooh, honey, what did I just say? <laughs> balance. We got Oshun, Harmony. Didn't I just say that? <laughs> right? You are moving in your balance, in Ma'at, in harmony, in peace, in uh, reciprocity, in uh, Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine. I like that. We're going to look up Oshun in just a Can you just look at this artwork? Oh, my word. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Yes. And so you can see the elements. You can see um, the queenship. Yeah. In Oshun. We're going to, just a second. We No, let's do it now. I don't want to move. Let's do it now. So initially we had the divine wild. Oshun is going to fall under divine feminine. No surprise there. Right? Because it's broken down the different colors on the cards. You see the burgundy at the bottom. And then uh, Oshun has green at the bottom. So the different colors on the cards um, are different categories. Okay? And so the wolf mastery fell under a wild feminine. Because, you know, we have been tamed for a long time. And now, you know, we can break free and we can be our authentic selves. And then Oshun falls under Divine Feminine. Um, 177, Divine Feminine. We are moving in all of our sensuality, um, which is why we were on the, uh, the Sacral Chakra. Bold is the one that we did today we are moving in our sensuality in our sacred divine feminine uh, birthing bringing forth uh, our emotions which is energy in motion we are making things happen we are bringing everything into uh, fruition it says drawing Oshun let me I'm gonna hold it up as best I can right it says drawing Oshun, the um, Yoruba Orisha of love, negotiation, and diplomacy indicates that harmony is at hand. Invite her to conduct the symphony of your life. Harness Oshun's power to reconcile tension and create pleasing chords. When I started out, I said, I just got a, a message and it really, you know, ticked me off. And so let me play this sacred uh, uh, sound bowl to calm my own nerves, right? And so now we pull this card. As I said, this is for me. Um, how does she tune each instrument to play with the other? The secret of harmony is that there is no music without consonance and dissonance. Oshun says that you may be required to harmonize diverging perspectives, containing them all within a framework of accord and mutual respect. So I didn't like the message. It, you know, ticked me off. But mutual respect so that I don't, you know, say something that, okay. Uh, long ago, 17 gods and one goddess, Oshun, were sent to prepare the young and vo volatile earth for humans. This is the story of Oshun. The guys got to work, but excluded Oshun, whose fertile power is linked to the rivers. They soon realized that without Oshun, creating a harmonious environment was impossible. Begging her forgiveness, they gave Oshun their most precious gifts, thus restoring the life-affirming relationship between the masculine and the feminine. Together they ready the earth, and from Oshun's womb, life sprang forth. 
her sweet and flowing waters, bringing suppleness and vitality to the otherwise barren world. Let me say this. I said it on another video. I'm going to say it again. Um, we have the idea that we are born from the earth. We are created from the dust of the earth. <laughs> and that comes only from the Christian perspective. The Bible, you know, uh, says that no other cosmology has us born from the dust of the earth. Most other cosmologies have us born from the water. So when it says that... Um, Together they readied the earth, and from Oshun's womb, life sprang forth. Her sweet and flowing waters, bringing suppleness and vitality to an otherwise barren world. We are born from the water. We are. You realize you can grow anything in water. We can grow our food, our plants. You know, because the water has everything. In it. That's why we can live without food much longer than we can live without water. We are not born from the earth. Not in that sense. Not from the dust of the earth. Somebody told you wrong. Okay. We are born from water. We emerged from water. A baby grows and forms in the uh, ambiotic fluid of the mother, which is water. Okay. So, Chew on that. Don't come for me. I've already said that. I'm going to say it again. Don't come for me because you don't want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, we are born from water. It says um, Oshun's wisdom teaches that harmony is dynamic, encompassing a range of voices through finely tuned scales and adjusting to variations in pitch, frequency, and tone. In other words, balance. Ma'at. Uh, Ma'at is reciprocity, it's balance, it's harmony, it's um, peace, it's Ma'at. I got plenty of them, just not right here, <laughs> just not right here, right? And so talking about mastering our, uh, who we are, coming to master, uh, moving in that wolf energy, in that uh, sacred energy of balance. Right? Divine masculine, divine feminine. And then we have Oshun, harmony. She's bringing us into harmony, birthing us anew. Yeah? So that all of your gifts come through. <laughs> I like that. Your gifts, your talents come through. Yeah? Okay. All right. Let's see if we... I was about to say, let's see if we can get one more. I like this one on the bottom. I'm not going to do it, though. One more. It, <laughs> it is my favorite one almost. Shapeshifter. Fluidity. Yeah? Fluidity. Just moving with the flow of energy. With the flow of the spirit, if you will. Uh, Shapeshifter. Let's see what. Uh, okay. She falls under the archetypal feminine. The archetypal feminine. You see that she has everything. Earth, air, fire, water. If you can see that in the image. Right? Archetypal feminine. Uh, Shapeshifter. One, four. Oh, I turn right to it. Look at there. <laughs> turn right to it. Okay. Fluidity. Let's see. Um, a card of transmutation. And transcendence, shapeshifter, takes you to new planes of consciousness. The vehicle is imagination. Again, the moon, right? Divine feminine intuition, uh, which extends beyond the immediate physical self and into the energy field of your surroundings. Tapping into your tribe, right? Adopting shapeshifter's fluid state. Different dimensions become available, and what's perceived as an obstacle turns out to be an opportunity. I love that. So the message that I received that I didn't like, okay, we're going to let that transmute that energy into 
uh, an opportunity. While shamans traditionally are able to transit the usual boundaries of the self by sending their souls out via the shamanic journey, you also carry the gift of shape-shifting. Shape-shifting is the ability to alter your awareness to match the unbridled purview of the heart. I like that. Your capacity depends on how you expand or limit your inventive faculties when one form or a body or a way of being is too constricting for the soul to flourish. Shapeshifter knows that forms follow function. To expand your world, you need to inhabit an otherness beyond yourself as well as within yourself, right? We become what we believe that we are. Uh, that, let me put it like that. That makes it very plain. We become what we believe that we are. At its best, shape-shifting is radically empathic, right? What we believe that we are. What our higher selves determines that we are. It enables you to step into other shoes, to conceive of infinite possibilities. Experience the revelation of spirit that comes when you have the courage, I got that courage card earlier today, to take on a different story, to embody someone else, to become your higher self. I like that. So I'm going to transmute that energy, right? I'm going to shape shift that into something else so that I handle it with a better uh, mindset than what I initially thought. Right? Because what I initially thought wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. I promise you it wasn't nice. Okay. I'm going to do the... Uh, just a couple of cards since I'm here. From the Herbal Astrology Oracle. The Herbal Astrology Oracle. Again, love, love, love this deck. Love this deck. Okay, um, the Herbal Astrology Oracle, they are beautiful cards. You see that? They are beautiful cards. And, uh, of course, you know, nothing is in order because I, I use these. I use these. <laughs> and so, um, if you are interested in getting a um, service, check my website. It's... Uh, it's going to be in the description. It's in the description. Um, as well as at the top of my page. Check my website or just send me an email. Send me an email at 8th House, H O U Z, 8th House at gmail.com. Uh, send me an email if you want to um, get a, a reading, get a healing service. I love this. Y'all don't understand how much I love when a plan comes together. If you want to get a reading, if you want a, um, uh, I'm not, okay. If you want a um, chakra balancing uh, service, if you want life coaching, just reach out to me. Let's determine what it is that you need. Oh, I love, love, love. I'm going to do one more and then I'll tell you what we have. <laughs> That's good stuff. Okay, maybe not. Hold on. Let's, oh, see? It was already here. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have Coco. Uh, which is chocolate, okay? Uh, number 36, it says foresight. But look at her. Oh, I love it. Foresight, okay? And we're going to talk about the uh, astrology of the card and how it ties into the wild and sacred divine feminine and the message that we are uh, looking at right now. So we've got um, uh, foresight, and then blue, blue Lotus, which is intention. 
is that not beautiful? You see these cars? Oh, my word. Intention. We talked about the intention here with the moon in the wolf card. Yeah. Tapping into your intuition, uh, setting intentions, transmuting energy, right? Taking it and turning it into something else. Being balanced in uh, Oshun, right? In harmony, right? In Ma'at. Okay. So, uh, Blue Lotus number five, which is change, which is making things happen, right? And the third card or the first card to come out was Dandelion, Wounded Healer. Chiron, the Wounded Healer. You see that? Look at Sagittarius up there. Right? <laughs> Chiron, the wounded healer. So let's talk about it. Okay. Coming into the mastery, right, of our gifts. I'm going to start with dandelion number eight. The wounded healer. Um, that is, uh, and, and it gives, hold on, let me tell you what, um, what, 53, what, um, astrology is above. It says, hold on, uh, the wounded healer wounds as tools to awaken, uh, us, our healing journey, inner child healing. It is Chiron and Jupiter. You can see Jupiter up top. Sometimes I remember the symbols of the uh, planets and sometimes I don't. And so uh, it says the English word for dandelion comes from the French word dent de lion or lion's teeth. Referring to the spiky pointed shape of the plant. Uh, the French call it the pee the bed or <laughs> due to its diuretic property. So it's talking to us about dandelion, which is a diuretic. Um, but it says dandelion is a survivor. It has an extraordinary ability to withstand hardship and thrive in disturbed environments. Now we're talking about our situation our circumstances, the things that we are going to shape shift, right? That we're going to transmute. It says dandelion is here to remind you that you can thrive regardless of your circumstances. Take ownership of your wounds. Find gratitude in the lesson. Dive deep into the depths of your origins and use your wounding to further define the purpose and healing you are here to transmit and share with the world. Dandelion, shapeshifter, right? <laughs> shapeshifter, number eight, infinity. We're gonna pull the, um, I'm, I'm gonna use these to pull an angel number uh, at the very end and we, we're coming to the end. Number five is Blue Lotus. Everybody knows and loves Blue Lotus. Let's see what the um, planets are. Oh. Okay, I didn't look. It's the sun and moon on Blue Lotus. Again, divine masculine, divine feminine. Yeah, being in balance, being in harmony. Okay, it says divine, uh, um, I'm sorry, Blue Lotus. <laughs> Intuition is the flower of enlightenment. The ancient scriptures call it a heal all. It's a water lily. Yeah. It was associated with the sun god Ra, the ruler of light. It's a precious water flower. I love that. It's uh, revered as the flower of the sun. It says the blue lotus is a direct doorway, a mediator into the world of the gods. The perfected balance that it bestows us assists us in bridging and refining the divine connection between the heart and the brain. I like that. Between the heart and the crown. Blue Lotus today is assisting you in widening the portals of your intuitive powers. Still talking about intuition and tapping in, right, to what's hidden. 
granting you access to the realms of inner knowledge held within the great mystery. I like that. I like that. It says, um, remember that the lotus rises from muddy waters. We know that, right? And it's beautiful. It arises from muddy waters. It uh, untouched and impeccable to blossom into majestic beauty. Blue lotus, harmony, balance between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. We've got 53, which we're going to uh, reduce to the number 8. We've got blue lotus, it's number 5. And we got cocoa, foresight, uh, number 36 that we're going to reduce to number 9. Let's see what the planets are for it. 33, okay. It is, um, oh, man, I love that picture. Okay, the image. Um, supernatural powers, ability to see universal truths, genius, spiritual guidance, brilliance, and it is Uranus and Venus. So Uranus is uh, quick moving, right? U Uranus is fast moving. And of course, Venus is love. It says, um, cocoa is commonly chewed to stimulate capacity, energy, and the abilities. Mama cocoa is what it calls it. Uh, it's considered so sacred that the shamans never consulted the oracle without first choosing the cocoa. The cocoa leaves and entering into a trance with its spirits. When consulting the oracle, they often threw the leaves on the ground with powerful intention to then analyze, to then analyze the divatory meaning, much like the yarrow with the I Ching. I like it. Uranus, uh, Aquarius, it, again, is, is stimulating, is fast moving, right? We know that um, about Aquarius, it says the mighty jaguar is the spirit animal to many great medicine people in the rainforest. The jaguar has been regarded as one of the fierce protectors of the sacred and seen as a bridge to the upper worlds or messenger from the realms of spirit. The coca lightning like energy has appeared today, signaling the piercing clarity foresight and power you have available to you right now. I love that. Okay, so we're going to we're going to finish this up with um we're going to slide these back. Um again, love 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 these cards. It is the herbal astrology cards, the herbal astrology oracle. Love them, love them, love them. And I think I have a, um, I think I have a, um, I think I did a review on those already. So check my site. I, I, I believe I did. Um, last thing, let's look at the angel numbers in the angel number book. Let me tell you something about this book. Now I bought the original book and I paid... $17 for it. Yeah. Okay. I found these in uh, Five Below for $5. Exact same book. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what's the deal with that. So, our number is 958. Okay. So, 958. Let's again turn right to it. I'm good at this. It says, Plateau, be in the moment. Perhaps you, you've been feeling stagnant as if you've been walking along an endless plateau. Your angels are signaling that this is over. They ask you to be in the moment today because there are things coming your way that will need your mindful attention. I like that plateau. Number 948. 958 in the angel number book. So instead of allowing 
uh, messages <laughs> to uh, make me angry and to uh, cause me to respond in a way that isn't for my highest good. It was going to feel good, though. <laughs> but that isn't for my highest good. Um, yeah, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to shape shift that energy. Yeah, I'm going to walk in harmony and balance with Oshun. Okay, as my wolf, as my animal spirit uh, allows me to master, right, my talents, my intuition, my intention is how I'm going to move forward in that with the foresight. Yes, of clarity, uh, tapping into spirit, coming to utilize my intuition on a higher level because I'm the wounded healer, which I am, right? I'm the wounded healer, but healer is the key, is the key word. And so we're going to come through our circumstance in that way. Um, I appreciate you so much being here, uh, taking this time to spend with me. And I'm going to do the next video is going to be uh, a review of the Wild Harmonic Oracle. I've had this deck a long time. Uh, I use it with my clients. It's an awesome, awesome tool. Um, and so we're going to do a review on the Wild Harmonic Oracle. Oracle. It's going to be the next uh, video. If you enjoyed this, please leave me a, a, a like, a um, a you know, me, a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, share the channel, if you will, with whomever you know that you think would benefit from the information. And this is Eighth House Goddess saying to you until the next time, I'm sending you so much love and light.